Did you know that there are different types of sleep apnea? The most common one is obstructive sleep apnea, where the apneas are caused by blockages in the airways. But in this video, we're going to talk about the less well-known kind, central sleep apnea. So if you've ever wanted to more fully understand central sleep apnea, then stick around. Central sleep apnea, or CSA for short, is less common than obstructive sleep apnea, but it's not exactly rare. It is estimated to affect almost 1% of people over 40 in the US. And if you are over 65, a male, have certain medical conditions like a history of strokes, heart or kidney failure, or if you take certain medications like opioids or antidepressants, then your chances of getting central sleep apnea are much higher. But what is CSA and how does it work? Well. I'm glad you asked. And while you're awake, you can choose when to breathe and when not to. Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. Sorry, of course, I'm just messing with you. But did you know that there is an extra bodily impulse to breathe known as the wakefulness drive to breathe? Now together, these factors tend to keep you breathing normally while you're awake, as they're more consciously controllable. But when you sleep, your body depends on an automatic process involving signals from the brain and other receptors in order to maintain correct breathing. This natural system is designed to keep the level of carbon dioxide in your blood within a certain range by controlling your rate of breathing. Episodes of central sleep apnea happen when something goes wrong with this system and the level of carbon dioxide in your blood goes outside of this range, either by becoming too high or too low. In either case, you can have a central apnea event, which is a period of no or very minimal breathing. The rarer kind of central sleep apnea is where your body doesn't provide enough of that drive to breathe. In this case, the weaker drive means you don't breathe enough and the carbon dioxide levels get too high. This kind of CSA usually results from taking medications like opioids or a disease of the central nervous system or neuromuscular system. But the more common kind of CSA occurs when the drive to breathe becomes too high during sleep because of something called the negative feedback loop or loop gain in the breathing signal. This increased drive can cause something called a chain stokes breathing pattern. This is caused by nerve cells known as chemoreceptors that are located by the heart, whose function is to sense change in the chemical composition of the blood and send that information to your brain. In other words, your chemoreceptors are supposed to keep the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood at a healthy balance. But in some people, particularly those who have congestive heart failure, there is a greater circulatory delay, which means the chemoreceptors are delayed in sending the signal to your brain about how much oxygen and carbon dioxide is in the blood at a given time. This causes a slower breathing rate when your brain thinks that there is too much oxygen in the blood and so tries to compensate that by increasing carbon dioxide levels, which it does, but then it continues to do so beyond a balanced level as the chemoreceptors are again delayed in relaying the signal to your brain that the levels are now good. By the time the signal does reach the brain, that there is too little oxygen in the blood and so the brain increases your breathing rate for too long and the cycle continues. Eventually, this irregular pattern of breathing in too little or too much much results in an apnea. Tracking? Now, if you look at the airflow data when you are in this breathing pattern, it will look like a flat line, then waves starting small and getting bigger and then going back to small and a straight line again. You can see an image of that here. Now, this is pretty much an airflow pattern that is the complete opposite of the steady wave pattern that you want to be looking at. Although this kind of central sleep apnea is regularly associated with congestive heart failure, like I mentioned earlier, it also can sometimes be a result of CPAP therapy for obstructive sleep apnea. What happens is the increased ventilation that CPAP therapy provides can mean the carbon dioxide levels reduce with the increased oxygen and essential apnea can occur. CPAP therapy for obstructive sleep apnea can cause central sleep apnea in as many as 10% of patients. And those that have both obstructive and central sleep apnea are said to have mixed sleep apnea. So there's a quick explanation of central sleep apnea and how it works. If you think you might have sleep apnea and would like to know for sure, then call us or visit our website at respshop.com and get a home sleep apnea testing kit. I've left a link to the kit in the description below. And for more videos on everything CPAP, subscribe, keep checking in, and in the meantime, sleep 
tight, friends. Bye-bye for now.